You're chasing something in life. And I hope you're chasing God. I hope you're searching for God. Listen, money's not bad. Chasing someone that you really like, like a female, or like I said, other way around, which girls don't, don't chase it. Let them come to you. You just sit there and look beautiful. And let that boy rock, walk across the auditorium and come find you and let them say their name. Hi, my name's John. Nice to meet you. And then you get to decide right then or there. Is it going to be a first date or no? We'll let you decide. But don't be chasing the boys. That's maybe for them youth in here. And see, some of us, though, we're really good at searching for God. I'll be honest, some of us are really good at it. We love to pray on Monday morning. We love to get in the Bible on Tuesday. We love to sit in our room and worship. We love to be at our computer in our cubicle at our office and say, you know what, God, I'm just going to pray right now. Some of us are really good at it. And other of us, we just, we're not so great and that's okay. Others of us, it's, it's hard to do. And I'll even be completely honest, as a pastor, sometimes it's hard to seek God. Sometimes on Monday morning I wake up and I'm like, I ain't really feeling like opening up my Bible. Sometimes on Tuesday I'm like, I don't really feel like loving people today. Now y'all like, oh my gosh, this is my pastor. Yeah, I'm just being real with you. Because we're human beings. It takes time. It takes energy. And some days we don't feel like it. Anyone know who Samuel L. Jackson is? He's an actor. Y'all are like, we, we just went from Jesus to Samuel. Yes, we did. Just give it, let me, let me. So I'm around young people a lot. And Samuel L. Jackson, he's an actor, great actor. And they said sometimes during the year, he would be in like six different movies at once. Like he would be like traveling from set to set, being in all these movies. And again, I'm around young people. And one time Samuel L. Jackson came up out of nowhere. And I, really, I've never given up on the younger Jason younger generation until maybe this point because what happened was it baffled me it was so beyond what I could ever even think they said Samuel L. Jackson comes up and they're like ain't that the guy on the Capital One commercials and I'm like the Capital One guy are you kidding me have you seen Coach Carter the movie have you seen Snakes on a Plane have you seen the movie called, like, this is a great actor right here, and you're talking about Capital One, Samuel L. Jackson? But it got me starting to think, how many people look at God like that? They don't see him actually for who he really is. They see him for the cheap version, the Capital One version. And we're like, look at everything that God's been in. Look at everything that he's done. And you're so focused on just the little commercial. See, because the problem is when people bring up God, when we start talking about God, people start getting confused because they really don't know who God is and what he's actually done. They think that he's just up in heaven and he's talking to the angel Gabriel and he's saying, show me who is the best worshiper in all the land. That's what we think God is sometimes. And God's like, I don't really care who's the best worshiper in Lubbock, Texas right now. I don't really care who reads their Bible the most in Lubbock, Texas right now. Why? Because he's seeking you just as much as you are seeking him. He wants to know you. He wants you to know him. And he's going after you. Psalm 139, 17, it says this, how precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. He's thinking about you. He's thinking about you right now. When you go to sleep at night tonight, he's just, oh, I love the way they breathe like that. He's thinking about you all the time. He can't stop thinking about you. Anyone like young love ever like, they got in a relationship and they're just like, oh my gosh, I can't stop thinking about it. And they like call their significant other and they like stay on the phone all night. Even they go to sleep. They're like, you, they wake up and they're like, you still there? Don't, I did that before. Not with, not with my wife, Jensen, but I was, so I, I, I wake up to her now, so it's awesome. And uh, that's what God is. Whenever you wake up, he's already there. He's like, I'm still here. But are you acknowledging him? He says, how precious are your thoughts about me? They cannot 
be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. I want to shift it. We're so focused on searching for God all the time. God is pursuing you. This morning, God is pursuing you. He pursues us first. In 1 John 4, 19, it says, we love God because why? He first loved us. He first pursued us. Let me show you. This is where it all started. Genesis chapter 3, 8 through 9 says, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord walking about in the garden. Can you imagine that? You just hear God walking in the garden. You know you can hear God walk. You can hear him talk. I promise you if, you, if you just listen hard enough, it says, him and his wife heard the Lord walking about in the garden, so they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord called to the man, where are you? He was searching for him. He was looking for him. God is looking for man in that moment. So if you are hiding from God this morning, I want to tell you something so special. He's searching for you. He's pursuing you. He's looking for you. Write this down. He pursues us when we are lost. When you are lost and don't know where to go, don't know which way to turn, God is pursuing you. He's looking for you. He's searching for you. I shared a story while I was in Clovis, New Mexico, and I just feel like in my heart I'm supposed to share it again. And maybe you've heard this story. I probably haven't told it here in a really long time. But about year four in ministry, y'all heard, I feel like I'm always like, I, I wanted to give up. Y'all hear a lot of these stories because God, like, this is tough. It's a tough job. So I have a lot of those moments in my life where I'm like, I'm leaving. I give up. But year, but year four, I just said, just, I'm really struggling and I'm just done with it all. I need to just get away. So I got on an airplane and I got out of Lubbock for a whole week and I didn't talk to God. Not one time. I didn't open up my Bible during that week. I didn't pray during that week. I just hung out with one of my good friends and didn't want anything to do with God. Finally had to come home, get on a plane, American Airlines. And, uh, they got like, it was like A3. It was the very, the very front of the plane. Not because I'm like baller and it was business class or anything. I just, my buddy paid for my plane ticket. So if you don't like the pastor flying first class, that's your fault. Okay, anyways. So, A3. I have my hood on. I'm walking in. I'm like, why am I going back to Lubbock? I don't want, I don't want anything to do with God right now. I don't want anything to do with people right now. I don't want anything to do with the church right now. I just, I need to find a new job. I need to find a new passion. What am I going to do? So I got my hood on and I'm sitting in A3 and Lo and behold, I get a kick on the back of my chair. And I'm like, what? It's 6.30 in the morning. Someone kicked my chair. I didn't say anything. Then about two minutes later, another kick. And I'm like, 5'6", Brody, really big and buff, you know. <laughs> I'm about to fight this guy behind me. Not going to do anything. What am I going to do? But I'm like, American Airlines about to kick me off this plane because someone's going down lean back. I'm like, what's your problem, man? Yeah? Yeah. When you haven't talked to God in a week, you're, you're, the way you talk a little, it changes a little bit. And uh, that's why you, yeah, you want to, you do. Anyways, yeah. Okay. All right. And so he's like, hey, man, my name's Landon. And he said, I'm on my way to rehab, a rehab facility in California. So I'm trying to go get my life right. But he said, they took my license away and I'd really like one more drink of alcohol before I get to California. Do you think you could buy me some alcohol? I said, you bet if you quit kicking my seat. Yeah, Pastor Brody about to buy someone some alcohol on a plane just for not kicking my seat. So he's like, all right, cool, man. Sits back down, put the hood back over, put my headphones back in and lay down. And then lo and behold, I hear someone just sit down right beside me. I look over, lo and behold, the guy that was sitting beside me, behind me, He's now sitting beside me. And I'm like, what's up, man? Like, now we're really about to fight because I told you I'll get you a drink, but you ain't got to sit beside me now. He's wearing a hoodie, too, and he pulls up his sleeves, and he's got cuts all on his arms. In that moment, 
I look out the window. We're in the air at this time. And I just said, all right, God, you're searching for me. You're chasing after me. I want nothing to do with you, but now you just brought an opportunity right in front of me. So I just said, man, I can't. I'm actually a pastor, and I don't feel comfortable buying you a drink. But I said, I can get you something to drink that you'll never thirst for ever again in your life. And I started to share Jesus with this young man. I said, he didn't have a notepad. I pulled out my journal because I always got to, you always got to write. We're going to talk about that in a second. And I just pulled my journal out, and I just started writing all these verses down. And I said, man, Jesus loves you. He's got a plan for you. Let me pray for you. And I started praying for him really loud. I wanted everyone in the plane to hear me. Yeah, we up in first class and we just praying. <laughs> you know, we, we get to the airport in Dallas and uh, he's like, will you walk me to my terminal? I said, yeah, man. I got a two hour layover and I walk him and we're standing there and I, I get this young man saved and pray for him again. And he's just so thankful. Because why? Not only was God searching for me, he was searching for this young man. When we're lost, when we want nothing to do with God, he's still pursuing us no matter what. And so I gave him my phone number. I gave him, he didn't, he didn't even have a phone, and I wrote it all down. I said, reach out to me, you know, when you can. And I didn't hear from him for two months, and I'm thinking, all right, this guy just, you know, who knows what happened to him. Two months later, I get a Facebook message, and this guy's like, hey, man, I don't know if you remember me, but my name's Landon. I was on the plane, and he said, I just want to let you know I made it to the rehab facility. I've been here for two months. I'm sober now, and I decided to stay a little longer, and I'm going to help some other people that were just like me. <laughs> then he became, last I looked, he was like a Christian rapper now. Why? Because God is searching for you, even when you're lost. Look at this scripture, Luke chapter 15, 4 through 6. Says, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country to go after the lost sheep until he finds it? We talked last week that you are some sheep. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. He's pursuing you. Look at your neighbor say, Jesus is pursuing you. Let me tell you how much he's pursuing you, whether you like it or not. Last Sunday night, we had one of the best youth services we've ever had in my 11 years of youth ministry. We're having service. We're about to take up our Wednesday, or not our Wednesday, our Sunday night tithes and offerings. And Debbie has something to share. And she stands up and she starts sharing it. And my mind went blank. I didn't even hear what she said. And I think it was a great story, though, Debbie. It was awesome. It was really good. But I don't remember what she said. But in that moment, I look over to my left and one of, the, one of the youth that just got baptized, her name's Kayla Bella. Is she in here? Is she, I don't know, is she? Oh, she's, there she is right there. You're awesome. And uh, she's just weeping, she's crying during this story. And I'm like, in that moment, then it just, I started crying. And God gave me a vision and he just said, all right, this is what I want you to do. So after, I don't even know, did you finish your story? Did I start, you did, okay. I don't know, like, I'm, I'm telling you like my whole, everything just went, out the window. I didn't know what happened. And I said, all right, move all the chairs. Move them all. We're going to circle up as a youth ministry. So everyone circled up. I said, if you want prayer in here, I want you just to come to the circle. And as you come to the circle, I said, then I want one of my youth, if you feel called, I want you to go pray for the person that's standing in the circle. Pastor Brody's not going to pray for you. So then we all get in the circle and no one's going. And in that moment, I'm like, all right, God. Like, was this really you, or was I, am I tweaking out right now, or what's going on? Like, I don't know what's going on. Why is it no one? So then I look around, circle my wife. She's playing in the back. She's just singing. She's worshiping. And I'm like, God, I know you showed me this. So I look at all my, you guys said, who wants prayed for? All their hands are like, I do. And I'm like, why is no one going to the center yet? You want prayer, right? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, I can't do it for you. I can lay hands on all of you and start praying and God could probably give me a word for you, but this ain't about me right now. This is about you and other youth that need to step out and know that God is searching for you. God is chasing for you. So then, all of a sudden, one of my bald youth just go out there. And then they look around like, all right, is anyone, is anyone gonna happen? And then it just takes a little, it takes like a 
just someone to step out. Anyone ever been to a dance party? Open floor, nobody, like nobody's dancing, but as soon as someone gets out there, you're like, he's crazy. Okay, I'm going to go join him. That's exactly what happened. So then by the end of the night, after an hour of this is going on, I got parents finally showing up. They're walking in there like, oh, okay. But at the end of the night, I got youth. No one's even in the circle no more because I got youth on one side just saying, I'm going to go pray for this person over here. And they walk, and then they lay their hands on them, and then all the other people just start coming. And then they pray over one person, and they all leave, and then they circle back up. And then someone's like, oh, you know what? They're not in the circle. I'm just going to go pray over here. So they go all the way to this circle. And then they lay their hands, and we got youth that are pursuing God. And I want to tell you something. Don't let your youth out pursue you. We got some adults that are like, is this really okay? It's okay. If we got young people that are willing to stand up and say, do you know what, I'm going to pursue God no matter what because he's pursuing me, you better believe it, parents, that you can do the same thing. Sometimes it just takes a walk. You say, I just got to walk to the other side, and I got to pray for somebody. So this week, when you feel like you're chasing something other than God, stop for a second and think, is God pursuing me? And the answer is yes, he is. See, stuff will not make you happy. It's great. I love having stuff. But it ain't going to ever satisfy you. It's only temporary. Stuff will not last forever. I always say, if you have a collection of anything, you better have a really good reason why you have that collection. Because if you can't take it to heaven, why are you acting like you can? When I was in college, I had, oh, when I was in high school, I was like a shoe fanatic. I still, I just still like shoes. But I had a ton of collection. I just had like Jordans, just boxes in here. Anytime I, anytime I made some money, I'm like, oh, I'm buying shoes. I had all these Jordan shoes. Went to college and met this young boy. He was one of our assistant coach's sons. And he needed some shoes. And I said, man, I got tons of shoes back home. I went home and I piled up my car. Drove from Tulsa, Oklahoma back to Lubbock. Piled up my car with just boxes. shoes. I went and I gave them all to him. Even to this day, I'm like, if God tells me to give something, you better believe I'm going to give it. If God tells me to go, you better believe I'm going to go. If God tells me to love, you better believe I'm going to love. I've left this church so many times barefoot because God said, give your shoes away. That's what Carlos knows. My wife knows. Stuff won't last forever. I saw a bumper sticker one time. It says, he who dies with the most toys still dies. You're going to die whether you like it or not, and you can't take nothing with you. That's why I want to seek the kingdom of God right now because that's what I'm going to anyways. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 in the message. And then it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. That's the only thing that's going to satisfy you. Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Get close to God. I was talking to someone the other day, and they were asking me about someone else, and I said, they're not in my circle. Not that I didn't like that person. I just said, we're not close enough for them to be in my circle, and they might not never be in my circle. Then I started thinking... I hope God don't treat me like that. I don't ever want to be like, no, he ain't in my circle. I love him, but he ain't close. I don't know him enough for him to be in my circle. I want God to know me enough to say, he's in my circle. And I want to know God enough to say, oh, he is my circle. So I got nine points for you this morning. I don't know what time it is. Who cares about the time? To help you seek God, to help you search for God. Number one, pray. You got to pray. Prayer is so important. Pray whenever you don't know what else to do. Pray whenever you're bored. Pray whenever you got everything going on. You know you can just pray under your breath. It don't have to be loud all the time. This is why you're sitting at your cubicle at the office. Just pray. Pray in the spirit. So important to pray. Number two, focus your search on Jesus. We looked last week. We looked. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You want to know what God looks like? Look at Jesus. Start reading the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. See who Jesus really is. I was talking to a guy. He hit me up on Facebook the other day. And he's like, man, I'm really having trouble with these Gospels because it just, it doesn't seem real. How could a guy really do this? And I said, man, it's real. Keep reading it. Don't give up. Search 
for Jesus. Focus on it. Number three, read the Bible. Not just the Gospels, but read the Bible. And you might say, I don't really understand it. Get you a translation that you like. Me and my grandma were talking this morning. She ain't really big on the message translation. But me and my youth ministry, we are. Why? Because we need something paraphrased for us. Because we're like, what does thou shout? Like, what does all that mean? I'm like, I need some easy stuff. Let's just get a Bible and read it. Who cares what translation it is? Read the Bible. I've said it before, but does anyone remember what they ate last week for breakfast? No. But it got you through the day, right? It satisfies you during that moment. You might not know what you read in the Bible, but I promise you it's going to get you through that day. Number four, remain open. Remain open to this all. You might say, I'm kind of a little crazy at Harvest Church. Remain open. We might have someone go running. They're just excited for the things of God. We might have someone yelling the whole service. Just excited about the things of God. Remain open. Number five, ask questions. If you don't know, ask somebody. Come say, Pastor Brody, can I ask you a question about this? If I don't know the answer, I'm going to say, I'm going to find someone that will. But don't be scared to ask questions about the Bible. Number six, investigate. You know, I spend so many time, I spend a lot of time, like, if I don't really understand something or if I'm like, where did this happen? How did this happen? I start getting online and I look at other people's point of views of what they think about it. And I just investigate. Number seven, talk to people who love and follow Jesus. You all know who God really is? Get around some godly people. Get around some people that really love Jesus. I tell you right now, because some of y'all hanging out with the wrong people. And now I, want, now I know why you ain't seeking God, because your friends ain't seeking God. But I promise you, hanging around some people that are going to seek God, you're going to be the next one that's going to seek God. It's going to be easy for you. So then you can talk to them. You can ask them questions. Number eight, journal. Like I said, I always have a journal. Write things down. Because guess what? Our little pea brain minds, we don't remember things. So when God gives you something, write it down. Then go back in the next week. Or you know what? I love, my dad has so many journals, and I actually keep one at my house from like, it's like in, from 1994. But I like to go back and read his journals because I, I like to see what God was doing in my dad's life 20 plus years ago. It might not have been what was happening in my life, but then I'm like, look what God has done. Look at everything that he's brought forth. So journal. Number nine, spend time in nature. You want to see God? Look, look at the stars. Look at the trees. Look at the dirt in Lubbock, Texas. Sometimes I'm like, God, did you miss a spot? <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verse 20, in the message translation. It says this, open your eyes, there it is. I'm talking about being around nature. Open your eyes, there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created. You can't tell me there's not a God. Go outside. There's a God. Tonight, look up at the stars. Don't tell me there's not a God. There's got to be a God. Look at nature. And this is why God is searching for you. And you better be searching for God. But we looked at Romans chapter 120 in the message, but I want to read that whole, not the whole chapter, but it's going to be a pretty good read, and then we're going to be done, and we're going to watch God move in this place, but starting in verse 18, verse 23, I'm not going to read all of it, but the title of that passage, is Ignoring God Leads to a Downward Spiral. That's what the Bible says. This ain't what Pastor Brody says. This is right in your Bible. That's what it says. Ignoring God leads to a downward spiral. And we have so many Christians in a downward spiral because they're just ignoring God. They don't want anything to do with God. They're not searching God. But in verse 18, it says this, but God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing and lying accumulate as people try to put a shroud over truth. But the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes, there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see. 
eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. So nobody has a good excuse. You don't have a good enough excuse not to seek God. I don't care if you're busy, still seek God. I don't care if you got 15 kids, seek God. I don't care if you work 80 hours a week, you better seek God. No excuse. What happened was this, people knew God perfectly well, but when they didn't treat him like God refusing to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. You don't see God, you have no direction. You don't know who God is, you have no direction in your life. They pretended to know it all, but were illiterate regarding life. They traded the glory of God who holds the whole world in his hands for cheap figurines you can buy at the, any roadside stand. People are trading God for all kinds of different things. Ain't nothing wrong with a big house. But if that big house is more important than God, then we got a problem. Ain't nothing wrong with nice cars. I love cars. But if I'm so consumed with cars more than I'm consumed with God, then we got a problem. So verse 24 says, so God said in effect, if that's what you want, that's what you get. I never want to get to a point in my life where God's like, all right, if that's what you want, I can't, I can't pursue you no more. Yeah, he's going to pursue you no matter what. But until you actually say, you know what? I know who you are, but I have no desire anymore. And come, I never want to get to that point. Now you're thinking, well, Pastor Brody, you did that on the plane. Yeah, I did it. we all do that, but we never want to like completely, I'm never going back, and then really mean it. We're going to come back. Because why? Yeah, shit, we sheep. We some dumb mugs. Sheep are not smart. I'm going to go down to verse 26. It says, worse followed, refusing to know God, they soon didn't know how to be human either. Here it is right here. I'm a, Jesus offended many to get to a few, so I might offend some people. Women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men. Sexually confused, they abused and defiled one another. Women with women, men with men. All lust, no love. And then they paid for it and how they paid for it. Emptied of God's love and godless and loveless wrenches. We got men that don't know how to be men. We got women that don't know how to be women. And then we got men loving men and women loving women. I'm here to tell you, it ain't right. I love you no matter what. I love you through your sin just like Jesus did. But I promise you're going to come to a church like this. We're going to say, hey, we love you. Come in. But listen, let's sit down and tell you, this ain't right. Let me show you the Bible. I gladly, any door's open for anybody. But if you seek God, you ain't going to want to live like that. If you know who God is, you ain't going to want to live like that. It might be a challenge. It might be a struggle. And you might have to renew your mind on a daily basis. But listen, you ain't got to do it alone. You got people in this room that say, I'll help you. You got people in this room that say, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to fight some battles with you. And you have the one, the God Almighty, that says, let me fight the battles with you too. Now we preaching. Verse 28. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose. Worship team, y'all go ahead, come up here. We're going to sing that last song that we just sang just a second ago. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose. Listen, God wants to bother you. He wants to bother you. He wants to talk to you on a daily basis. Anyone ever have that kid that, like, won't leave you alone? Like, just leave me alone, man. God don't want to leave you alone. And you shouldn't leave God alone. We got to bother God. I want to go to God all the time and be like, hey, God, it's me again. I know I just talked to you just a second ago, but here I am. I need something else. I want something else. Use me right now. Let's bother God. Let him bother you. And then all hell broke loose, and it goes on saying all this kind of stuff. But why hell broke loose? We go down to the end. And it's not as if they don't know better. 
they know perfectly well they're spitting in God's face and they don't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. We know better in here though. I love that we have a church that's just gonna seek after God. And as we seek after God, as Harvest Church seeks after God, as you seek after God as well, I promise you, he's seeking after you just as much. He's pursuing you just as much. Stand up on your feet this morning. We're going we're gonna to worship, but what I want to do right now is I want my prayer team, I want y'all to come forward this morning. If you, if you are on this prayer line, and if you are in here this morning, and you say, you know what, I just need prayer. I need to seek God a little more. I need some answers in my life because I'm confused. I need to know what the next step is for my life. Maybe you're in here and you say, Pastor Brody, I used to seek God and I kind of don't seek him anymore. I don't really know how to talk to him. Listen, you come to one of these people, we're going to help you. You might be in here this morning and say, you know what? I've never even heard of this Jesus that you're talking about. I want to make him the Lord of my life. I want to know God. I want him to come live and dwell on the inside of me. I want to give my life to God. I want you to come up here and I want you to meet one of these people. And also, you, you might just be in here and just say, you know what? I'm filled up, but I just want a little more. Why? Because I can't sit still. I can't stand still because I love Jesus so much. You want some more passion? You want some more purpose? You come up right here to one of these people this morning. And we're just going to pray for you. Y'all ready to sing? Let's go. Let's do it. And I promise, there's people here. Don't be ashamed. Listen, just like my youth, they had to step out. It might be a little challenge for you, but I promise you, you take that first step, God's running right after you right now. Hallelujah. Just ask God in this place this morning. Come on, we need some people getting filled up in this place this morning. Seek 
Hallelujah. Come on, it's game time. It's game time. Do not be on the sidelines any longer. God is saying, you better get in the game. Don't be standing there any longer. It's time to go. You're the quarterback. You're the quarterback. You ain't the kicker. You ain't the offensive tackle. You're the quarterback. God saying, I want the ball in your hands. Stop being on the sideline waiting. I know there's people that want prayer. I know there's people that say, you know what, I just need someone to pray for me. Don't be embarrassed. We are all have things going on in our life. If you knew half the stuff that I've done, half the stuff that I'm like going through on a daily basis, you'd be like, how is he up there right now? Are you kidding me? You're sitting there. Listen, you need some prayer this morning. Don't be shy. Don't be scared to come forth. Don't miss your opportunity to get into the game right now because God's saying, listen, I have something for you. Here's the ball. Do something with it. Watch what I do to use you. So if you're here this morning, I'm going to give you one opportunity, and then we're going to call it quits. Don't go home thinking, I wish I would have went up there for prayer. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Seek first, seek first the kingdom, and all will be added. Seek first the kingdom, and all will be added. Seek first the kingdom, and all will be added. All will be added. All will be added. Seek first the kingdom, and all will be added. Seek first the kingdom, and all will be added.
It's more than I can say. I'm melting your peace. It's overwhelming. Yes. Come overwhelm me. Yes. The more I seek you, the more I see. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, this is church right here. You might say, is it going a little long? That's okay, because people are getting set free. People are getting delivered in this place this morning. You might say, Pastor Brody, why didn't you come down here and pray? Listen, it ain't about me. You need to know that Pastor Brody don't have to pray for you. I need a pastor to pray. No, you just need you to pray for you. You need someone up here to pray for you. You need the person beside you to pray for you. You don't have to have Pastor Brody pray for you. Because guess what? The same spirit that lives in me, guess what? He lives in you too. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to give these people a little longer that are still up here. Just stretch your arms toward these people. We're going to say a prayer together. God, I pray right now for these people up front. I pray for these prayer leaders up front. I pray for whoever came up here up front, God. I pray that you have a plan for them. I pray that you have a purpose for them, that they are not forgotten, that they are not lost, but you are pursuing them. You are chasing after them, and you will make a way where there seems to be no way. So what the devil has created for evil, God, you will turn it around for your good. So I pray favor over their life. I pray blessings over their life. And greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. So this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith so I pray that faith is rising that just everything's rising up on the inside of them and they are being filled with uh, evidence of speaking in tongues if you have never been filled with the spirit in here and you want that I want you to come up front this morning because we need more of that we need more people praying in the spirit Paul says I pray in the spirit more than all of you why because it builds you up so if that's you in here then we're going to take a little longer if that's okay if that's you in here just come up if not that's complete, completely fine but thank you Jesus for the move of God in this place thank you for Harvest Church in this place God that we are the church we are your bride use us God move through us thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah sorry hallelujah thank you Jesus come on just sit here right now God's so real God's so merciful. Just sit here in silence real quick. Let God speak to you. Let God talk to you. Let him show you some things in this place. What he wants to do through you and in you and around you.
Jesus. He's pursuing you. He's chasing you. All you got to do is seek him. And you're going to find him. I'm not playing games anymore as a pastor. We're going to be a church that seeks God week in and week out. And we might not be the church for everybody, but I promise if you come here, your life is going to be changed. Not from what we have and what we can do, but what he can do. And he wants to change your life. He wants to bless you. John 10, 10, I'm going to end with this. It says, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But what did God come to do? To give you life and life abundantly. Meaning that blessed life that he has so much for you. More than ever you can even think or imagine. He's got something for you. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say, he's pursuing you. Mitchell, you got something? All right. Yeah. Come on. We. Mitchell's got something for you. Just close this out. this one time. I know there's there's a, the spirits here. I heard one time that when you have a candle, it takes nothing away from that candle to light somebody else's. Amen? When you have a match, when you strike a match, it, it takes nothing to light everyone else's match in the room. It takes away nothing from you. Just makes that fire bigger. Amen? Man, praise God. I don't want to start preaching have round two, so... Hey, praise the Lord. Well, hey, guys, just want to, before you go with some announcements, we do have Wednesday night lead on Wednesday. Show up for that. It's going to be great. Youth tonight from 6 to 8. And then uh, on Wednesday night in the cafe, we're going to have enchiladas, rice and beans, chips, and a drink for 10 doll hairs. Wow. You should show up for the food and for the word. Amen. You guys got that.